Welcome. I'm going to try to cover the whole of the global environmental crisis, the entire globe, uh, at a rate of about one slide every 23 seconds. The idea for the Young Conference came from um, hearing about this exciting new way of doing conferences that's happening in sort of techie circles. I wanted to bring that creativity and that um, idea of listening to your audience into an event with young people. This is the problem you face. If we look at the world population, going back to when humans appeared from mitochondrial DNA probably around 130,000 years ago, we're whacking through at an incremental rate. This is a staggering rate of population growth. Why do we need science media coverage in the first place? Why do we need science out there on TV, in the newspapers, on the internet? The fastest mass extinction the planet has ever seen on the fossil record, probably by a factor of 10,000 fold, and you're in the middle of it right now. There'll be lots of kids in your school, like lots of kids that I've encountered, who don't really want to do science up to 16. You know, they're not really interested in it. No matter how hard people like me try to get them interested, they're not. So is it fair that we force them to study science? Are you really going to teach those kids science, or are you going to build in them a resentment towards science because they were made to study it until 16? Does it really matter if the public don't understand the full nitty-gritty of scientific research and if it's all slightly wrong? And is it the job of the media to be educating the public in any case? Is that really their role? In the next three years, chopping down rainforests will release as much carbon dioxide as every single aeroplane ticket ever sold since the days of the Wright brothers up to the year 2025. And the problem with landmines is they are a very cheap and effective deterrent. You don't want someone to go into a certain area, you lay landmines, you just scatter them, you can scatter them from aircraft, you lay landmines, the first few people go in, they get limbs blown off and they don't go in again. But it's not good enough to just state that science is important. You have to explain why. So your challenge this afternoon is, you need to convince me that everybody needs to study science, because I'm not convinced. It costs around 768 grams of CO2 per dollar spent on GDP. You've got to get that down to six. Oh, Hooke's Law, have you all done Hooke's Law? Hey, what's the point of Hooke's Law? You get some springs, you hang some weights off of it. It's probably incredibly boring, right? And Hooke already did it. With most science, there is an ethical dimension. Look, just because you find something fun doesn't mean you're learning anything. The science is made so simple as to actually making it wrong. Adults, my generation, have no solutions to any of these problems. We have got so much knowledge, we have so many resources, yet we still act like stupid idiots. We import, we import oranges from South Africa. We don't have to look after the earth to make our lives easy, we have to look after the earth to make our kids' lives easier. Our lives are going to be much easier if we don't look after it. Yeah, we, like, if you want the genuine information, then you go read it from a journal in the first place, as opposed to right, then, getting it from the mainstream media. To simplify it so that regular people can understand it and it's not all medical jargon. Yeah, and going around now, two The problem with hydrogen is that it's explosive. It's highly, okay, highly reactive. Yeah. Obviously it's highly reactive. Surely this comes to responsibility of the person designing it because they could create a very silly experiment. Even if you do have to simplify something so that the general public could like, understand it, that doesn't mean you, it's less it should be less accurate. Well, L'Oreal was founded by a chemist over 100 years ago and so science is absolutely fundamental in everything that we do. The challenge with doing such an unstructured event with young people is that they're not used to being given the floor in such an open way and apart from anything else that can be really daunting. So we've added in a little bit more structure. If you can't hear what's going on, do put up your hand. If you know, 99% of people think it's not. We've already been proven that it's wrong. The challenge for us has been learning how to do this entirely new type of event as we're going. Using email and Twitter with young people in a live event has been a bit of a steep learning curve for us. It's not really, really. But it's a well known stereotype. Yeah. Yeah, like and it is largely true. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see the sports personnel who are on TV all the time. And they, they're not scientists, they haven't done science. You don't see the science side. So that the dependence isn't, shall we say, on the object. I say it's more that we've been made to feel dependent on these. What about all the medical advances you've got? All the equipment in hospitals that use electricity to save lives. You'd be going backwards. You would actually just go back to being a caveman. No, no, no. I'm not saying that we don't need all electricity. I'm just saying that there are certain things that we've been made to feel that we need a lot more than we actually do. We hope to feed back some of the themes from the day directly to Parliament to give them a flavour of what young people think are the answers to the sorts of questions that we've been debating today. You cannot 
get rid of basic scientific literacy. We already have so much scientific illiteracy in the world and it's really not helping. It's someone's job themselves to question what they, what they see and what they hear and what they read. And that if people don't do that, then it's simply a free-for-all and anyone can say whatever they like, especially in the media. So that's why we want people to be better informed about science in general and that's key, we thought, about critical thinking that needs to be compulsory to everyone from earlier. Because it's difficult to get work experience and not many children are exposed to what a career in science would be like, it's quite hard to aspire for a career which you really don't have any information about. If you look at how science actually works, then you look at the stuff on the GCSE specification, they're completely divorced from each other. But the one thing we can do is make sure that the kids, so the younger generation, make the choice that they really want to, like make sure there's opportunities to become scientists, that is if they want to become scientists. We want to make GCSEs a lot more challenging to differentiate between the real future scientists and the people who are quite good. The idea of a beef tax, which despite uh, unpopular opinion based from people who like steak, we think that this would actually uh, work quite well because for a start, cows produce a large amount of methane and that contributes to global warming. At the same time, there are lots and lots of other options for food. We want to be consistent with the specifications. We only want to change them if something has gone deeply, deeply wrong. Because if you just... Thank you. But sometimes when things like polymers are discovered, it creates whole new industries which leads to millions of new jobs eventually. It also leads to jobs outside of science as well. If you know, you're attached to the government, if you speak for the government, it doesn't have to be this huge negative thing fighting global warming. It can, be, it can mean maybe that Britain tries to become the biggest exporter of environmental technology. We don't have to see it as like a huge job that we have to fight against. We can see it as a way to make money and a way to actually get richer as a whole, whole group of people. So you need to educate people, and not just young people, but adults. Because a point that we raise, someone like Professor Hugh Montgomery, who's saying that it's now our generation's job, he doesn't have to suddenly say, that's it, I'm not going to do anything anymore. It's your job now. You're still a generation, well, I'm looking at people sitting lower down, that's still very much prominent in everyday life. So everyone needs to be educated. And that would largely now be done through the media because we can't tell you all to go back to school. Another main issue was the environment investment. Very different from anything else we've ever done. How to get lot, a lot. consensus on anything. Yeah. Very, very tough. It's always worth the trip down from Definitely. Yorkshire. I can now see why politicians have a tough time.